Hello everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Dr. Angel Storm. Today I wanna to talk to you about gaslighting. This is a super common term. Most of us are probably familiar with it and what it means, but in this video, I just wanted to take the time to explain what it sounds like and what it does to someone who is experiencing it. So to start, the basic definition of gaslighting is to manipulate someone using psychological methods into questioning their own sanity or powers of reasoning. Gaslighters are seeking always to gain power and control over the other person by distorting their reality and forcing them to question their own judgment and intuition. So much of my channel and all of my coaching is focused around making sure that you first are healed. Why? Because when you are healed, you're going to be able to be more in tune with what somebody is saying and have the ability to judge whether they are really coming at you from a place of wanting to know more. They're wanting to reason with you, whether they just really have not remembered this specific instance correctly, or if there's another motive that they have for denying what actually took place. So your quality of relationships will, will be predicated on how much healing you have had personally. So let's get back into talking about gaslighting. So I'm going to list you 10 signs of gaslighting in any type of relationship. Again, this can be within a romantic relationship, within your family or work relationships, with your friend group. The context in which these things are happening really doesn't matter so much as that they are happening. So first of all, lying. It's the most common form of gaslighting. So denying something happened, refusing to admit the lie, even when you have shown them proof, even if you can actually demonstrate that never happened. I do want to point out that people will gaslight you who are not narcissists. So in this example I just gave about lying, saying that even when you have proof that this never happened, it can, it can be that that person is not a narcissist. That's absolutely possible. What can be happening there is that the other person doesn't actually want to see the truth because if they see the truth, then there might be some responsibility that they have to take for it and they're just not emotionally mature enough, mentally capable to take that type of responsibility for what whatever damage has been done in that situation. So again, I just wanna be very clear that gaslighting is always abuse, but it's not always done by a narcissist. Mm -hmm. Second thing, in insisting that an event or behavior you witnessed never happened and that you're remembering it wrong. Again, even when you have shown them the proof for it. Spreading rumors and gossip about you or telling you that other people are gossiping about you, whether or not that's true or not. Changing the subject or refusing to listen when confronted about a lie or other gaslighting behavior. Telling you that you're overreacting when you call them out on that, that type of behavior. Blame shifting in relationships, saying that if you acted differently, then they wouldn't have to treat you like this. So this is all really your fault. Trying to smooth things over with loving words that then don't match their actions. Twisting a story to minimize their abusive behavior, minimizing their hurtful behaviors or words by saying something like, it was just a joke, or you're way too sensitive, or you're just interpreting it wrong. Separating you from your friends and family who might recognize your gaslighting abuse symptoms. This is so common amongst narcissists. They will isolate you and pull you further and further away from your support structures. Any of these signs of gaslighting in relationships are cause for concern, and it indicates that at the least there is an unhealthy connection, and there absolutely can be severe mental health repercussions for the person being gaslit. Blame shifting in relationships and other gaslighting behaviors can take place between colleagues or between a supervisor and employees. So recognizing these symptoms isn't just necessary for your romantic relationships or your close connections outside of your workplace. And it's very common that people who are narcissists use gaslighting in every area of their life. So if you are working for a narcissist, someone may use gaslighting against you in order to avoid owning up to a mistake at work or to unfairly take credit for a task well done. You know, I've mentioned in other videos on this channel that that positions of power, so court systems, uh, medical systems, uh, universities, po politics, places of this nature are prime places for narcissists to 
uh, to work. One, because they get access to so many people. They have so many sources of supply, you know, at that, at their place of work. But number two, it actually gives them a, a structure, the environment that they are stepping into actually supports them and rewards them for their narcissistic tendencies, right? If I can lie the best, if I can gaslight other people the best, if I can intimidate people more, I have a better opportunity at getting reelected if I'm a politician, at getting the promotion if I'm working at a university, at a medical center. If I'm an attorney, I'm going to win a lot more cases. So these things are actually reinforcing, rewarding, and then and then learning, teaching the narcissist how to be a better narcissist, how to use gaslighting to further their their goals in every way, including in the workplace. Another type of workplace gaslighting is known as whistleblower gaslighting. And this means that, you know, there's a situation where an employee has reported misconduct at work. Um, you know, there's a toxic environment, there's a toxic uh, supervisor, there's a toxic coworker that you're you're with, maybe even sexual harassment or things like that. And then you're made to feel that you're overreacting, that you're remembering it wrong, that you're misinterpreting it. And typically, when the most common ways that this is done is that HR will do an investigation. Well, we asked the person about that and there happened to be X, Y, and Z witnesses who also saw that interaction and they said that that wasn't how it happened. You're remembering it wrong. Everybody but you has this, has a different story. And again, this is very dangerous in situations where the the alleged abuse actually did occur, right? Because you're now you know that you are in an environment that is going to protect that type of behavior, encourage that type of behavior, and that there's not going to be any recourse done to people who violate uh, the terms of conduct for working at that workplace. I also want to talk about gaslighting used by narcissists when you're in court with them. And this is most common through something called muddying the waters, which is when they try to make your behavior and their behavior appear equal so that the judge or other third parties involved in the case cannot differentiate between who the abuser is and who's being abused in that situation. And so typically uh, they will call this case high conflict. Oh, both of you are doing this same thing. <clears throat> We can't tell which one of you is the abuser, which one of you is being abused. You guys are equal, right? Many times people will actually lose their court battles with the narcissist because they cannot make a big enough distinction between who they are and how they behave and then who the narcissist is and how they behave. So hopefully by now you understand what gaslighting sounds like and feels like in multiple different atmospheres and situations. So now I want to talk about what to do about it. So first of all, it's so important that you make sure, again, that you really are experiencing gaslighting. It seems like a crazy thing to say, especially because it sounds very easy to spot, but there are so many people who are not willing to do the internal work and get healed from past hurts, and that leads them to project those injuries onto other people who are doing their best to honestly communicate with them. So number one, I recommend that you take notes on everything that has happened. Dates, times, who was present for the communication or interaction, as well as the communication and the messages that you write that down. So you actually write down the exact words that were said to you, or you take a screenshot of either the email or the text or whatever it is. This will help you to build trust in yourself in knowing that you really are experiencing what you are experiencing if it is gaslighting. And this will also help you to build up your evidence for this happening if you need to confront the person, if you need to escalate the situation or whatever, you're gonna want to have the evidence. If you suspect that you are being gaslit at work, then it's really important that you do not take a meeting with that person unless another person is in the room with you. Every meeting that you have and every interaction that you have with that person, you need to send a follow-up message, a follow-up email to them, uh, in writing. So you want to say something like, I just want to make sure I understood what you were communicating with me during our 10 o'clock meeting today when you said X, Y, and Z, and that you are looking for an output of A, B, and C by X date. Is that correct? You want to follow up everything that they tell you in writing. 
If you are in a romantic relationship or you suspect you are being gaslit, then you need to open up to someone that you trust. You need to share your story. And I know it feels like your silence is loyalty and is creating this incubation space for the relationship to flourish. But most of you are just sealing yourself in a gas chamber. Your silence is violence. If the person is genuine and understands this, it's a simply a communication issue, they will want to change. And if that's the case, then there's never any harm in bringing somebody else in to help because you both have the same goal of repairing the relationship. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned so many times in my videos, identifying someone as a narcissist, identifying somebody as a toxic person, identifying somebody as a healthy person or a good person is not what you should ultimately be looking at or for. You should be focused on, is this person the right type of connection for me right now in this season of my life? And is this the very best connection that I can have? I'm looking for excellence in everything that I do touch and connect with. When you set your sights so low, it's no wonder that you're hitting things way under your target. I'd expand mm -hmm. on that analogy, except that YouTube would take this video down so you can go Google where to put your sights at close range. Keeping accurate records for yourself so that you know that you are not just in a bad mood and in an emotional state, in a vulnerable place, etc., etc. It Because most of the, these things the narcissist has already told to you, if not convinced you of already. That's why keeping accurate records is so important. Documenting everything, that's step one. Having an evaluation system in place is step two. And what I mean by that is that you need to be able to review these things, especially with someone that you trust in terms of the long-term goals. That's the context of which you are reviewing these notes. Hey, do I want this behavior in my life or not? We're not trying to figure out, is this person a narcissist or are they just a normal toxic person or are they just, you know, unable to communicate well? This is the best way to ensure that you're not only not falling victim to gaslighting or any other toxic behavior, but that you are aiming high enough and that you are aiming to be in the perfect will of God for your life. And if you're in a custody battle and you're trying to figure out how to document how the narcissist behavior is impacting your kids, then I want you to check out this video next in which I explain how to build a best interest case for court.